Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. Monkey business is a term that gets thrown around with some degree of derision, as if monkeys were incapable of a good honest day's work. If you are of that belief, then baby, you ain't met Jack the Railway Baboon. Also, if that is not the name of a ukulele playing hipster band by noon tomorrow, then my work here will have been in vain. Back in the 1880s, there was a railway employee named James Jumper Wide. Everyone called him Jumper, as he would often jump between rail cars during the course of his daily duties. In a cruel twist of fate that no reasonable person could have seen coming, he was struck by a rail car and lost both his legs just below the knee. He continued in his locomotive employ and carried on via two peg legs, working at a signal house wherein he would direct trains in which way to go at his junction. On an off day, he was visiting a popular South American market where he witnessed something surreal, a chakma baboon driving an ox cart. Impressed by the primate's skills, James bought him, named him Jack, and made him his pet and personal assistant. As is tradition! Those peg legs made his half-mile commute to the train station extremely difficult. So, the first thing he trained that primate to do was to push him to and from work in a small trolley. Soon, Jack was also helping with household chores, sweeping floors and taking out the trash. But the signal box is where Jack truly shined. As trains approached the rail switches at the Utenhag train station, they'd toot their whistle a specific number of times to alert the signalman which tracks to change. By watching his owner, Jack picked up the pattern and started tugging on the levers himself. Soon, Wide was able to kick back and relax as his furry helper did all the work switching the rails. According to the Railway Signal publication, Wide trained the baboon to such perfection that he was able to sit in his cabin stuffing birds, etc., while the animal, which was chained up outside, pulled all the levers and points. One day, a concerned train passenger staring out the window saw that a baboon, and not a human, was manning the gears, and complained to the railway authorities. This may have been the first recorded Karen in history. Rather than fire wide, the railway managers decided to resolve the complaint by testing the baboon's abilities. Apparently, while many people at the management office knew Jumper had hired an assistant, the fact that it was a monkey had somehow slipped through the cracks. The manager instructed an engineer to sound a train's whistle and watched, shocked, as Jack made the correct signal changes. Apparently, Jack never looked away from the train, ensuring his work was correct. Jack knows the signal whistle as well as I do, and every one of the levers, penned Railway Superintendent George B. Howe, who visited the baboon sometime around 1890. It was very touching to see his fondness for his master. As I drew near, they were both sitting on the trolley, the baboon's arms round his master's neck, the other stroking his face. Jack was reportedly given an official employment number and was paid 20 cents a day and half a bottle of beer weekly. Jack passed away in 1890 after developing tuberculosis. He worked the rails for nine years without so much as one solitary error. So the next time someone criticizes you for monkeying around, Thank them for noticing that you did everything you were supposed to do without ever making a single mistake. <laughs>